Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I've got Bitcoin up here, guys, on the hourly, and it is taking a bit of a dive right now, uh, trading just under 3,200, or sorry, rather 32,000 per BTC. Um, so I know a lot of you guys, I've even had, you know, people contact me who have invested in crypto in my real life, who know that about me and have asked me, you know, have we seen peak Bitcoin, uh, because the price isn't looking like it's going to move to the upside. And, uh, you know what guys, we still have to hold on. Like I had mentioned, uh, Bitcoin could experience deeper cuts and 40 to 45% is not out of the question. Now, uh, we know institutional money has flowed into Bitcoin, but, uh, you know, Bitcoin is still going to do its thing at the end of the day. Uh, let me remind you that uh, back in the 2017 bull run, we routinely saw these types of corrections, these uh, large corrections that were upward of 45%. And if I just uh, take a fractal pattern here, just to show you guys again, if you didn't catch the video where I demonstrated this before, I will show you guys this again. If you bring up this fractal pattern uh, as one of the corrections, one of the uh, typical type of corrections we saw two or three or four times even uh, in the last bull run in 2017 leading up to that parabolic move we did see Bitcoin correct so this would bring it uh, in and around here so the 27,500 mark give or take it would line up with this level of support here uh, and if I put that on the hourly you guys can see that here let me zoom in a little more here you guys can see that so this kind of move isn't out of the question uh this is why these prices don't really shake me now i mean if you are uh, the type of person that is uh, shaken easily maybe you shouldn't uh maybe you should sell your bitcoin now if you have bitcoin or other altcoins that you see going down but this isn't even a 45 percent move this is only a 30 percent move for example and that would bring us down to 27,000. uh but it could be as high as 45 percent just be careful the cryptocurrency space is uh, taking a bit of a breather right now, and uh, you guys can see up here the market cap for uh, the entire crypto space is back under $1 trillion, and we're going to see this price fluctuate uh, based on how much money is being poured in or not. Uh, we know, of course, the narrative surrounding XRP is that there's an SEC lawsuit, and uh, you know a lot of us within the XRP community, myself included, believe that XRP is still very undervalued when you compare it to the rest of the crypto space. Um, now, we have the SEC lawsuit, a lot of coins are already pumping, and, uh, you know, I get a lot of questions about other coins, and this is par for the course. A lot of people are getting wrapped up in this altcoin frenzy, and they're looking for that next coin that will pump to the moon. Well, guys, just be careful, make sure you do your due diligence, and this is why I tend not to bother, uh, so much with coins that I have not researched, or coins that aren't in the top 10, one or the other. I know I've told you guys a little bit about VeChain, and I know that isn't in the top 10, but I have researched it. It does have uh, a really good team behind it and a use case. That is what's important. A little later on in this video, I'm going to talk about this concept a little further, uh, what to be careful of, and the Ripple lawsuit uh, particularly, and uh, is the SEC gunning for other coins? Uh, first though, I saw this from the Cryptic Poet. Yes, Pornhub has added XRP to its payment options, and I know a lot of you guys probably heard about this news. They haven't only added XRP, they added BNB, USDC, and Dogecoin. Uh, so the move means Pornhub's more than 120 million daily visitors, wow, <laughs> can now pay for premium subscriptions in the four digital assets. Notably, Pornhub has removed the support of privacy-oriented coins like Dash and Puma Pay token, which were supported as of mid-December. So here are some things you guys probably want to pay attention to with regards to investing in cryptocurrency. And I know this has to do with Pornhub, but these are all little hints, little clues that you guys should be uh, paying attention to privacy coins if you guys hold them be very very careful so uh this goes on to say the latest revisions increase the number of pornhub supported tokens uh, to 16 from 14 uh okay and so basically here are the tokens that they support binance coin bitcoin bitcoin cash dogecoin ethereum ethereum classic litecoin they do still support monero which i find very interesting nem xrp tether tron zcash which is also a privacy coin waves verge and usd coin so it's interesting that they added XRP. Clearly they are not too worried that XRP will be deemed a security. They are going ahead and adding a cryptocurrency that uh, obviously can transact value very, very quickly, efficiently, and very affordably. Makes sense to me. I uh, wanted to keep moving on. Uh, this from the Cryptic Poet. Ripple partner Neom and TAT Capital team up to offer working capital solutions for SMEs. So uh, today TAT Capital launches uh, TAT BizPay in Australia, their latest working capital solution that 
that allows small and medium-sized enterprises to utilize credit limits in corporate cards to help make payments, including commercial rent or other supplier payments. So this is being powered by Neom Guys, who is a Ripple customer. Uh, so BizPay allows business owners to convert their credit card limit uh, into an instant free cash flow stream for their business for up to 55 days. The platform will allow business owners to use their credit card to pay local vendors that do not accept credit cards. Businesses now gain full control of costs by eliminating fees and charges associated with other credit card options. Now, uh, this is happening in Australia. Of course, RippleNet utilizing XRP uh, are being utilized in other parts of the world. It's just the United States where we're not seeing this clarity yet. And uh, the Cryptic Poet also just brings this up here. Neom, of course, a Ripple partner. Uh, Neom began leveraging Ripple's advanced blockchain technology to process transactions in real time. So for those of you guys new to the space might not know the connection, we are seeing the partnerships being built. Ripple partners leveraging RippleNet technology uh, to uh, acquire more partners on their end. So that will actually just grow the network bigger. I got to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting this. Another one here, guys, from T. Hall Betic, XRP here on Twitter, Dominican Republic's Bonco BHD, Leon Partners, with major Ripple partner, Rhea. This will enable a withdrawal of remittances through its ATMs. So uh, here we have it here, Bonco BHD, Leon announces that for the first time in the country, remittances can be withdrawn at its ATM, sent through uh, Rhea Money Transfer and uh, Flexivios remittances service platforms through a press release the entity highlighted that it was the only financial entity in the dominican republic uh, that includes this service through atms as a channel for receiving remittances through dominican pesos so uh, a great piece of news here i gotta thank t hole Betic xrp for posting that and so another sign, I just brought up these two tweets uh, demonstrating that Ripple partners around the world are still moving forward with their business model despite what's going on in the United States. We also have Pornhub listing XRP very, very clearly after the SEC lawsuit uh, had been filed. And um, But we also got a very different narrative in the space. There are a lot of stories in the cryptoverse. And uh, I wanted to bring this to your attention from XRP photographer. In 30 days, NYAG will rule on USDT, which is Tether. In 30 days, Ripple sits down with the SEC to settle or go to court. Coincidence? All eyes on February 22nd. So the reason why I bring this up is because there's also the Tether controversy. So iFinex Inc., parent company of stablecoin operator Tether and the Bitfinex Exchange, has produced a substantial volume of documents to support its case against New York Attorney General Letitia James. The outcome of the case could have a huge impact on digital asset markets with Tether, regarding uh, regarded as the asset that backs up much of BTC and other popular assets price. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what's going on with this, I did do a video on this a alleged tether scam. I'm going to put scam in quotes because it is still alleged and hasn't been proven in court. I'm going to put that video up here in the top right hand corner if you guys are interested to catch that. Uh, essentially, uh, the, well, I guess you can watch the video. You can get the, there's a lot to go over here. Basically, the long and the short of it, the creators of Tether were accused of creating a stable coin in order to use as a vehicle. First of all, they said it was going to be backed one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to the USD. Later, we find out that they are saying now that it is partially backed by Bitcoin and other assets. And, but the problem is, they're also using it to buy Bitcoin. So that is a very, very brief and uh, probably not a great description of what's going on here. Uh, so if you guys do want to know a little more, I suggest you check out that video. The result is likely to be that a ruling that imposes penalties on iFinex and Tether, the company that oversees the USDT asset, and or demands they become more transparent in their future operations. A large complaint about Tether among market participants is the opaque nature of its governance and uh, exactly what assets back its value. So it is still very murky as to uh, what Tether's actually backed by, uh, what's going on, and, um, you know, if it is indeed a scam and, you know, the SEC slaps some kind of who knows what on Tether, this could actually collapse Bitcoin price and the rest of the crypto market. So this potentially has widespread negative implications uh, for Bitcoin holders and for altcoin holders, basically everybody who is invested in cryptocurrency at this moment in time. Let me just go down here, and again, guys, I will link this uh, article in the description if you want to uh, read the full thing. 
Uh, let me go down here. So what if it is too big to fail ended in actual failure? Some pundits have even described Tether as too big to fail and an unstoppable force of nature for the digital asset industry. The former expression carries on an even more ominous tone in these markets than it does in the banking sector since no government is likely to step in and bail out Tether's affiliated companies or investors. The too big to fail would mean it simply fails, taking much of the digital assets market with it. Some have noticed that USDT production stopped around the deadline for iFinex to submit its documents to the New York OAG. Uh, the BTC price had also dropped or stayed stagnant since then. So uh, it's just showing more graphs here, uh, showing how Tether printing is actually linked to Bitcoin price, which is not going to be good for their court case. There's some more details here. Let me go down here. The matter looks certain to be settled one way or another in 30 days time, while the digital asset market looks on nervously. Should Tether become unable to mint new USDT units in massive quantities in the future, Future, which seems the most likely outcome, it could have a negative impact on BTC price and cause BTC investors to look again at what, if anything, the asset can actually be used for. So uh, another uh, criticism of Tether is that they were, of course, printing Tether like, uh, well, kind of like the Fed just kind of prints greenbacks off, you know, just there's no limit to how much they can print. Uh, they're claiming that it's backed by Bitcoin, but again, that uh, in itself is problematic. Lots going on here and very, very, uh, I think very, very important to pay attention to if you guys are invested in cryptocurrency, because this could have widespread implications to the rest of the market. Now, I wanted to continue on with this theme because John Deaton here, yes, John Deaton, the lawyer, that uh, filed that claim to the SEC uh, on behalf of XRP investors. He came up with this tweet thread and I wanted to read it to you guys because it also has to do with the entire crypto market as a whole, but using Ripple as that example. You know, in videos that I've been doing for the last three weeks where I've been saying the SEC is likely using Ripple as an example for the entire crypto space. Well, John Deaton seems to have come to the same conclusion here. Ripple executives like Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, Joel Katz, and Stuart Alderati have stated that XRP was not designed to pay for a cup of coffee. Instead, it was designed for the bankers and money service providers. In fact, XRP was labeled by the hardcore Bitcoin community as the banker's coin. And so this is the prevailing narrative, right? Uh, XRP investors versus Bitcoin maximalists, uh, two different ideologies. Of course, it seems all very childish, uh, but that's besides the point. Let's continue with this. XRP as the banker's coin has been helping several financial institutions and or money service providers during the last several years. Uh, help to these financial institutions runs afoul with the original vision of Bitcoin, which was to replace and or bypass the banks. If you disagree, simply read the first paragraph of Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper. It reads commerce on the the internet has to come uh, to rely almost exclusively on financial institutions serving as trusted third parties to process electronic payments. The first sentence of the second paragraph reads, what it needed is an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust, allowing any two willing parties to transact directly with each other without the need for a trusted third party. The trusted third party is the bank. Hence the BTC Maxis label XRP the banker's coin. Fine. The SEC and others need to understand this important design distinction. I say that because in the SEC's complaint against Ripple, it seems to take issue as significant that Ripple understood that XRP purchasers routinely resold XRP to other investors in the United States and other countries. See SEC complaint page 15 paragraph 88. This issue of secondary market resales of digital assets was also publicly mentioned by Clayton on business channels such as CNBC. The argument that a digital asset that is publicly traded in secondary markets somehow transforms that digital asset into a security is absolutely absurd. So, of course, uh, going on with this theme of, you know, the SEC wants to uh, look at XRP as a security, wants to, you know, basically say that uh, these guys used it in the way that uh, certain companies would use a security. But John Deaton obviously finding more evidence that it is not. It's absolutely absurd. He goes on to say, uh, if true, then the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple potentially implicates all digital currencies and or digital assets. Remember, Clayton has publicly stated that in his belief, if a person purchases a token and someone goes out and does a venture and that effort increases the value of the token, then it is a security. He said that if a person gets a return in the secondary markets from the token, it is a security. 
So you see what John Deaton is saying up here. If true, then the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple potentially implicates all digital currencies and or digital assets. Now, I'm going to put a, uh, a disclaimer, not a disclaimer, but a caveat in here suggesting that maybe not every single, maybe not 100% of the crypto space, but guys, there are over 8,000 coins in the crypto space, and I would say 99% of these cryptocurrencies, or rather the companies behind these cryptocurrencies, currencies created the cryptocurrency to sell to fund their company and so they would be subject to the same scrutiny so where was my spot here okay the mere fact that some investors may acquire xrp with the hope that it will increase in value does not transform xrp into a security the same is true of btc and eth speculators the same is true with baseball card speculators gold speculators art speculators or pokemon speculators and uh, this is an argument he's used before i've tweeted several times that the sec case against xrp poses a potential threat to all of crypto why would the sec claim that today's xrp is a security with all the claims lately about regulation uh, crypto including Bitcoin does the government have all of crypto in its sights so again there is clarity surrounding Bitcoin and Ethereum as of now the government is now eyeing XRP and I think with this case because Ripple is a company behind the token and again I don't know why they gave clarity around Ethereum I'm still trying to wrap my head around that uh, we we can get it with Bitcoin but with Ethereum there's still a company there there's a there's a head Vitalik Buterin who created the ETH token but with Ripple XRP and the rest of the crypto market there's a very similar story here and so this this is what John Deaton is pointing out. Does the government have their sights on the entire crypto space? I don't know if you guys remember Brad Garlinghouse mentioning back in an, uh, in an interview from 2018 or 2019, him saying, you know, I could see 99% of coins basically go poof, disappear because of the way that the companies were releasing the coins. And uh, this is another reason why, and you know, to have this background, this is another reason why I think that Ripple is in a very strong position. I don't think Brad Garlinghouse would have said that had uh, he not had his T's crossed and his I's dotted. That's just my personal opinion on this. So John Deaton goes on to say, why was the SEC complaint against Ripple full of irrelevant noise? For example, why did the SEC discuss Garlinghouse's personal sales of XRP while mentioning that he had publicly stated that he was very long XRP? It's not relevant unless the SEC is alleging fraud or misrepresentation. A CEO often gets paid in stock. A CEO often sells some of his stock. That doesn't mean he isn't long the stock or the company. Jeff Bezos, for example, sells 1 billion Amazon stock every year. Why bring Brad's XRP sales up if you aren't claiming fraud and or misrepresentation? representation. It's absolutely irrelevant to whether XRP is a security or not. Did the SEC bring it up to make Brad and Larson look bad? Uh, and yeah, this is a question that I'm asking myself as well. Uh, was it meant to generate outrage so that other crypto projects root for the SEC and against Ripple and XRP? Is the strategy of divide and conquer in play here? Uh, in a thread to follow, I will show you how even Bitcoin could be in danger so a very interesting tweet thread here by john e deaton i gotta thank john deaton for posting that that is just one man's opinion he is a lawyer of course i also wanted to bring you guys this clip from this lawyer regarding uh something along the same lines this coming from attorney jeremy hogan and uh i'm gonna play you guys this clip this was a video he released a few days ago uh he talks a little bit about this issue here let me play you guys this starting around here but really what came to my mind finishing a review of the Tether lawsuit is a bigger picture issue because the allegations are really bad and they make for good sound bites. You know, fraud, RICO violations, collusion, and all of these things get to the ear of regulators and legislatures. And trust me, they are chomping at the bit to regulate and get a piece of the growing crypto market, the SEC, FinCEN, the Treasury Department. Which leads to my next quick topic, the coming regulation battle against crypto in general. Now, the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit is just the beginning. Crypto is getting too large to ignore and making too many headlines. And I'm going to stop it there because uh, I think Jeremy Hogan uh, sums it up pretty nicely. The cryptocurrency industry is getting too big to ignore. It's making waves. The Ripple lawsuit, I think, is just the beginning, guys. I think this is going to be a precedent-setting case that is uh, likely going to affect a lot, if not most, if not an overwhelming majority of the cryptocurrency space. So this just all to say, be careful what you're holding guys. Make sure it has utility. Make sure that you've done your research, done your due diligence.
And to be honest, make sure to take profits off the table while you can, because a negative verdict by the SEC could affect your cryptocurrency, having it plummet to the downside, and uh, maybe in some of your cases, wipe out the majority of your portfolio. I believe we've already seen the worst for XRP, uh, and now there's light at the end of the tunnel, in my opinion. XRP right now trading just under 28 cents. We've seen what the SEC lawsuit can do to a cryptocurrency with a big name behind it. I wouldn't want to see what it could do to coin number 396 on the list, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.